Hello and welcome to the first asynchronous lesson for our first ever Make a Play subscription box. My name is Miss Anna and my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I am so excited to have you with us for our first month. My goal for today is to introduce you to the goals of this program and to get you comfortable working with the things that you received in your first box. First of all, if you aren't familiar with the Quinnan Street Project, we are an arts organization providing theater education to the West Contra Costa Unified School District and to Contra Costa County. But one of the very few cool things about the current world is that we are learning in ways that do not limit us by our location. So hello to learners all across the country. At QSP, when we talk about theater education, we always talk about the following things. Number one, Theater means to use your three tools of an actor to tell a story. And your three tools of an actor are your body, voice, and imagination. We also believe in working together as an ensemble. The word ensemble is French for together. It literally means together. So even though we won't get to be in the same room, we are all going to be working together. Our last thing that I want to address is at the Quinn Street Project, we believe in being brave and having fun. One thing that we value at QSP is for our young actors to feel supported enough to take risks and make mistakes. We don't expect you to be perfect because we're not perfect either. Mistakes are how we learn and grow and we are here to make mistakes right along with you. Now let's get started. So this month's theme is it was a dark and stormy night. Since December and January have some of the shortest days and the longest nights of the whole year, we wanted to lean into some of the spookier parts of winter. Because of that, I chose the famous Edgar Allan Poe poem, The Raven, for us to work with. Poe is one of my favorite writers, and I am so excited that we get to work with his words. Oh, I'm gonna, there we go. Edgar Allan Poe was born on January 19th, 1809 in Boston, Massachusetts. Famous for writing about dark topics and spooky subjects, Poe is actually credited with writing the first detective story that may have influenced Arthur Conan Doyle to create Sherlock Holmes. Although Poe was born in Boston, he spent most of his life and career in Baltimore, Maryland. In fact, Poe and the poem we'll be working on, The Raven, are so famous in Baltimore that the NFL football team, the Baltimore Ravens, are named for Poe and this poem. Now, you may be wondering why the theme is, it was a dark and stormy night, when that line isn't in our poem. Well, to be honest, I didn't really know where that line came from either until I started doing research about for this lesson. Here's what Wikipedia says. It was a dark and stormy night is the opening sentence of English novelist Edward Bulwer Lytton or Lytton, we don't know, his 1830 novel, Paul Clifford. It was a dark and stormy night. The rain fell in torrents, except at occasional intervals when it was checked by a violent gust of wind which swept up the streets, for it is in London that our scene lies, rattling along the housetops and fiercely agitating the scanty flame of the lamps that struggled against the darkness. Now, to help build the ambiance of the world Poe creates in The Raven, I decided to talk about the word gothic and the art that it refers to. So you may know the word gothic or goth as it applies to teenagers with black lipstick and spikes on their belts. While that style is not of the gothic era, it is a direct descendant of the gothic movement. Merriam-Webster defines the word gothic as, you can see here, relating to or resembling the goths, their civilization or their language. This was a German civilization, ancient. Uh, 2A of relating to or having the characteristics of a style of architecture developed in northern France and spreading through Western Europe from the middle of the 12th century, that's a long time ago, to the early 16th century that is characterized by the converging of weights and strains at isolated points upon 
uh, uh, upon slender vertical piers and counterbalancing buttresses, one of my favorite words of all time, and by pointed arches and vaulting. That's a lot of words. And some of those words I believe are in our poem, but we'll sh I'll show you some photos of what that really means. The Gothic architecture basically means there's lots of big arches and kind of things that shouldn't be able to stand up as easily as they do, but because they're balanced against each other, it's kind of like a house of cards if you've ever built a house of cards, which is a fun thing to do when you're home during a pandemic. Um, there also is number three, often, often not capitalized, ever relating to a style of fiction, <clears throat> Uh, characterized by the use of desolate or remote settings and macabre, macabre means um, spooky, it's just another word for spooky, macabre, mysterious, or violent incidents. Okay, now as a noun, uh, I'm sorry. Oh, Siri is mad at me from my watch for some reason, don't know about that. Often not capitalized, a novel, film, or play in the Gothic style. So that's kind of what we're going to be talking about with Poe and the Raven. So while that all may sound very boring, Gothic art and architecture is far from boring. You may have seen some examples of Gothic libraries in your activity book. Here they are again to help remind you. Now, I have actually been to the long room at Trinity College oh, twice. <laughs> It's one of my all-time favorite places in the entire world. One thing that I love about libraries is their smell. Some people love the smell of libraries and bookstores so much that they make candles to try to capture the scent. I'm not that crazy about it, but I do find libraries to be very calming, which is probably why I have so many bookcases in my house. There's, I'm looking at three right now. Now, what does all this have to do with the Raven? Well, I think... Here, I'll go back. What does it have to do with the Raven? I don't know. <laughs> I think that a Gothic library is the perfect setting for our poem. Poe is one of the original Gothic writers, and I can just see our narrator sitting in a room with big vaulted ceilings. Here, look at these again. See how big that is? Look at these big arches. And a fireplace, can't you? So on our final day for this box, I would love for you to gather as many books as you can and to create an atmosphere that makes you feel like you are in one of these old spooky libraries. To go along with that, I also sent you some materials to find your own books. So the little note cards can be filled with drawings, notes, your own poems, your own drawings, or whatever you want. If you haven't figured out how to make your own books yet with the materials I sent, then I will show you how to do it. Uh, I can't do it right now because I forgot that I was going to show you how to do it. But uh, maybe just seeing the notch that you could cut out um, is helpful. Yeah, I was going to do this on camera for you. And I got a kitten instead. I'm so sorry. <laughs> anyway, once you have your book, once you have all your stuff ready, I would love for you to spend some time, especially writing in the book that you're going to bind for us. I want you to start thinking about, and this was in your activity book, I want you to think about your five W's for the poem. Who is the raven about? What is it about? When does it take place? Where does it take place? And why do you think Poe wrote this poem? I know that's a lot of questions. I know that's a lot of thinking. But I also think you can do it. You guys are all, I know, I know who got a box because I brought them to you or I gave them to my dad to bring to you. So I know who you are and I know that you're very bright. And I know that you can answer those questions. So when I see you, I would love for you to have some answers to those questions so we can talk about it. And in just a minute, uh, I'm also gonna have that same conversation with our other QSP teaching artists. So you can kind of hear what we think and help generate some of your own ideas. So that, my friends, is the end of just me and this dumb screen sharing stuff. I'm going to take a pause and I'm gonna let in all of our teaching artists. All right, welcome back. So welcome to our QSP teaching artist staff. They're standing in as you all today, they're standing in as 
our students. So what we're gonna do is we're, yes, there they are. They're all so beautiful and lovely. So I am going to lead a short lesson, kind of like if we were in person and you all can follow along at home and, or you can just watch and enjoy and watch it again later and follow along. It's up to you. I'm not the boss of you. So we're gonna do the way we always start at Quinn Street Project is we say our names, we say our pronouns, and we say one word about how we're feeling today. And since we are virtual, we also have to shout out the next person who is going to do that because if we're not in a circle. So my name is Miss Anna and I, uh, my pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm feeling harried. <laughs> and I'm gonna shout out next to Mr. Justin. Hello, I'm Mr. Justin. My pronouns are he, him, his, and I'm feeling frazzled. Uh, and <laughs> I'll pass it, uh, I'll shout it out to Mr. Brian. Thanks, Mr. Justin. My name is Mr. Brian, and my pronouns are he, him, and his, and I am feeling caffeinated. That's a feeling today. And I'm gonna pass it on to Miss Melissa. Hello, I am Miss Melissa. My pronouns are she and her. And I am feeling stuffy. And I will pass it on to Miss Madison. I am Miss Madison. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I am feeling squiggly. And I will pass it on to Miss Tierra. Hi, I'm Miss Tierra. My pronouns are she and her. I'm feeling curious today. And I'll pass it back to Miss Anna. All right, friends. So the next thing that we always do is warm up our three tools of an actor. And remember from what I just said, the three tools of an actor are our body, our voice, and our imagination. So when I warm up our tools, the thing, first thing I like to do is start with our imagination. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine, starting with our imagination, that you have a helmet on. And this helmet is in charge of all of your imagination. And it's, it's on because you're imagining that it's there already, but I want you to really pump up the juice to it. So think about mine kind of has like a knob right there and I'm gonna turn that knob up. I'm gonna move this switch on. Oh, it's starting to hum, it's getting exciting. And so start showing me what your imagination helmet looks like and show me one thing that it does that is exciting uh, with your pantomime ready, teaching artists, go. Beautiful. So with our, <laughs> with our on imaginations, I want you to look up at whatever is above you. Is it a ceiling? Is it a sky? Whatever it is. I want you to imagine that there is something up there that you really, really want. And I want you to reach for it with your fingers. I want you to reach, 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 reach all the way up with your fingers. And if you're lucky enough to be standing up on your feet, I want you to be all the way up on your toesies. And I want you to reach one hand a little bit higher and the other hand a little bit higher and switch and switch and switch and switch and grab that thing with both hands. Grab it like this and drop it right in front of you for safekeeping, just with your hands. Boop. And drop just your elbows. And, or yep, your wrist, drop just your elbows, your shoulders, just touch your ears. And drop your shoulders. Very good. We're gonna take a nice deep breath in, shoulders back up to our ears. And out and down. Up and in. Out and down. Last time up and in and out and down. Now with our big, beautiful imaginations, we're going to imagine that we are holding the world's most head-shaped crayon. And we're going to put that head-shaped crayon onto our heads, imagine that. And we are going to draw some big, beautiful circles on the ceiling or in the sky, ready, go. Slow, beautiful circles. You wanna be careful drawing these circles. Try to get all the lines nice and even and freeze. And you're gonna change direction. Wanna make sure you do at least two or three circles in each direction. And head back up to the center. Very good. Take that crayon off of your head and break it in half. And stick one half to the shoulder, one half to the shoulder and draw me some circles forward and forward and forward, freeze, and backward, and backward, 
and backward. Lovely, take your crowns off your shoulders, put them back together, put them away, say, see you next time. Very nice. We are going to puff our chests forward like we are big, powerful superheroes and cave them back like we are nasty, wasty villains. And give me face, I love everyone gave me a face anyway, but give me faces for these superheroes and villains, ready? Superhero forward and a villain back. And superhero forward and a villain back. And this time for your superhero, you're also gonna give me a full body superhero pose. Ready, three, two, one, freeze. And this time for our villain, we're going to have a full body villain pose. Ready, three, two, one, freeze. Beautiful, relax. <laughs> Very nice. And we are going to make some energy balls. So you're gonna take your hands. You're going to clap and rub your hands. Clap and rub your hands. Get your hands really, really hot. Really, really hot. Oh, and when they're so hot, you can't stand it. Let go very slowly, very slowly. You should feel kind of like you're holding a ball of energy. Very nice. Now you're gonna take this energy. This is your chi, this is your chi energy and you're gonna pat it into your body. Pat, 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 pat it into your arms. I have a bad back today, so I'm gonna give a little extra love to my back. I'm gonna give some pats to my back and my legs. Yeah, I see people patting their shoulders. I see us patting our faces. I see us patting our necks. Very good. We're gonna make another energy ball, Red. Oh, I see patting our tummies. Very good. We're gonna make one more, ready? Clap and rub your hands. The clap is important. Helps the fire start. All right, get that nice fiery warm energy in between your hands and again, slowly let go. See if you can stretch the energy more this time. And this time with this energy, we're gonna brush it on, brush. Like you're covered in flour or dust and you have to brush it off. Brushing off all that icky stuff. Brushing off all the icky stuff. And gently, with a little bit of energy you still have in your hands, you're gonna gently give it to your face. You only have one face in this world, so you gotta be gentle with it. Cheeks, forehead. Maybe I'm gonna take my glasses off and just do gently on my eyes, gently. Good job. And we're gonna turn that into a very gentle massage on our jaw. Good job. And watch this, we're actually gonna pinch our jaw bones. Pinch, pinch, pinch. I know my light kind of keeps going on and off, but it's just how it is. Good job. And now you're gonna take your wrists like this and you're gonna draw them down your jawbone and you're gonna yawn. Oh, very good. And I'm gonna unmute all of my teaching artists. Ask to unmute, ask to unmute. You can unmute yourselves if you're ahead of the game. Great. And cause we're gonna start warming up our voices and I want us to be able to hear each other's voices for this. So the first thing that we have to do to warm up our voices is to make sure our mouths are ready to work. So we're gonna blow out our lips kind of like a horse. And we're gonna add some sound. And hi to low. Now we're gonna go low, high, low. Start high this time. Good work. And we are going to warm up our articulation and we're going to say ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. Ga 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 ga. Ga 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 ga. Ba da ga. Ba da ga ga ga. Ba da ga. Ba da da ga ga. Ba da ga ba da ga ba da ga ba. But the 
Very good. Thank you so much, friends. All right. I feel warm. Do we feel warm as a group? Rad. If you're not warm at home yet, just run around the house. Don't tell your parents. All right. So we are going to do a quick activity with something called active verbs. Now in theater, active verbs are everywhere. We talk about them all the time. Now a verb is something that you are doing, right? So an active verb is something that you're really physically doing. So really quickly, I want us to brainstorm just a couple of our favorite active verbs. And teaching artists, you can just shout them out because I can't necessarily see all of you all at once. So uh, if you've got one you like, shout it out to me. Love. Love, I love that one, obviously. Anyone else? Freeze. One more time, Ms. Tira, I'm sorry. Freeze. Ooh, freeze. Okay. Dive. Ooh. Chase. Ooh. Okay. Destroy. Ooh. Okay. That's a wonderful start. Now we're going to add to this list and we're going to start filling in a blank. So the blank is going to be I'm going to blank you. Okay, so teaching artists, some of these will fit, but let's add some extras that maybe are gonna fit really well into that blank space. What's, a act, what's an active verb that we can add into that blank? Slap. Slap? Yeah. I'm going to slap you, okay, great. Anything else? Tick, tickle. Tickle, love it. Comfort. Oh, I heard two at the same time. Mr. Justin, what was yours? Oh, feed. Ooh. And Miss Melissa, what was yours? Comfort. Comfort. My enter button is being silly. Okay. And anything else? Any any other ones that we want to add? We don't have to do too many. Throw. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Beautiful. So here's how this activity is going to work. We are going to take turns and one at a time, we're going to say this sentence with one of these active verbs in that blank space. Now, the first time we say the sentence, we're gonna be fully still. Our bodies are going to be just in actor neutral, which means our feet are on the floor, not crisscrossed, our arms are by our sides and our chests and hearts are open, ready to work. So I'm going to pick first and I'm going to say, I'm going to tickle you. Okay, so I'm just going to say that one more time in actor neutral. I'm going to tickle you. It's fine. That's fine. Now, I'm going to add a physical movement on the word tickle. So I'm going to go like, I'm going to go tickle you. And already you can hear my voice is changing because I'm excited to think about tickling someone because it's so fun because they laugh. So I am going to move on the movement word. Okay. So watch me first. I'm going to say it blank once and with movement. I'm going to tickle you. I'm going to tickle you. See, I didn't plan that. I didn't think very hard about it just happened because I moved my body. Uh, I, I would love, um, uh, Miss Melissa, would you take one of these and give it a try, please? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to love you. I'm going to love you. Ooh, very nice. Did you hear how her voice changed? I heard that very clearly. Thank you, Miss Melissa. And Miss Tierra, would you go for us, please? I'm going to chase you. I'm going to chase you. Woo! See how much more fun that is? That's the theater I want to see. And uh, Mr. Brian, your turn. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy you. Ooh, scary, Mr. Brian. That was a scary one. And Miss Madison, your turn. 
<laughs> I'm going to throw you. I'm going to throw you. Whoa, that's an interesting play. <laughs> and Mr. Justin, your turn. I'm going to slap you. I'm going to, no, wait. I'm going to slap you. <laughs> I would love to see that play. That one looks great. All right, friends, thank you so much. Great work teaching artists. Give yourselves a round of applause. Now, what I would love for you to do at home is, while I had that list up, just pause the video, go back, use that little 15 second back thing on the YouTubes, pause it, pick a couple that you wanna try and fill it in, move your body. But the reason that we're doing this is because I also sent you a very, very long list of vocabulary words for the Raven, because again, the Raven was written over a hundred years ago, long, long time ago. So some of the words aren't as common anymore. We still use a lot of them, but they're just not as um, popular as maybe the word popular is, I don't know. So what I would love for us to do is we're going as a team, as an ensemble, we're gonna talk through the poem and we're gonna stop when we get to some of our vocabulary words and we're gonna use our bodies to help bring some of these images to life so that we don't, we're not just learning vocabulary words thinking, okay, this means that and this means that. We don't, that's so boring. We hate that. That's why we hate things. But if we get excited and we move our bodies, then you can love words the way I love words. Because if you're using your body to engage with a word, it's just more exciting. It's more than your brain. It's a bigger, your body is like the biggest part of your brain. All right, and your voice. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen uh, with my lovely and talented teaching artists. And we're gonna look together at our vocabulary words. And I'm gonna go ahead and start reading through our poem. And when we get to one of these vocabulary words, and there is a few, I think they're in order. Ooh, I think they're in order. And if not, I'm so sorry. Wait, I know what to do. Wait, I'm gonna pause this real quick. Okay, so here are our vocabulary words. And I have over here, I have our poem. So here we go, The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Once upon a midnight dreary, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. Wee -wee -wee -wee. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, 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 warning, warning. warning. <laughs> So the word lore means legend. And what does the word legend mean? What does that, anybody have kind of a, what, what does a lore or legend mean to anyone here? You can just popcorn out. Like an old story that teaches us something. Ooh, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. So how would you pose your bodies for the word lore? Ooh. Ooh, okay. Beautiful. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as if someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, distinctly I remember, it was in the bleak December and each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly, I wished the morrow. Vainly, I had sought to borrow from my books, Surcease of Sorrow. Sorrow, ooh, ooh, we got one? We got one, we got one, we got And what, what's it mean? There it is. It means an, an end. end. Ooh, how would you move your body to show that something is ending? Ready? Three, two, one, please. Ooh, ooh, lovely. Let's try that again. All right, so this time when I get to that word, you're gonna move your body. Um, and if there's any other words that sound like you wanna be like pantomiming or showing me a tableau of them teaching artists, go for it. This is a very image packed poem. Um, but we are gonna shout out all these, uh, many of these vocabulary words. Um, mm, 
surcease of sorrow. Okay, so from uh, eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I had sought to borrow from my books surcease of sorrow, sorrow for the lost Lenore, for the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, nameless here forevermore and the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating to some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Entreating, requesting, how would you move your body for requesting? Ready, three, two, one, freeze. Ooh, <laughs> fabulous. All right, since we lose Miss Tierra in just a minute, we will, uh, teaching our, every, um, let me pause this real quick so that I can ask everyone a real question. Pause recording. And the silken, sad, uncertain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me, filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now to still the beating of my heart, I stood repeating, tis some visitor, entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This is it and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is I was napping and so gently you came rapping and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door that I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Darkness there and nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was unbroken and the darkness gave no token. Vocab alert, vocab alert! <laughs> it's, it's a vocab word. <laughs> I love you all so much. And what does token mean? It means a clue in this sense. So meaning that our narrator is looking out, no one's there and no clue of who could be there. All right, what, how would we move our bodies for a token looking for a clue? Ooh, okay, I'm gonna take that one more time. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming dreams no mortal ever dared to dream to dream before. But the silence was unbroken and the darkness gave no token. And the only word there spoken was the whispered word, Lenore? This I whispered, and an echo murmured back the word, Lenore. Merely this, and nothing more. All right, it's getting super spooky in here. And Miss Tierra, are you getting a little spooked? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I think this is a little scary for me. Okay. <laughs> So we're gonna you walk and tell me how it goes. We will, we will. Miss Tira has to bounce, but we will say, uh, Miss Tira, if we could just do a quick check out one word about how you're feeling at this point in the lesson right now. Still curious. Oh, I'm so Still sorry. <laughs> I have to check about how the story ends later. Yes, you will. And we all say thank you, Miss Tira. Thank you. <laughs> all right. All right, so it's just us now. Uh, it's always been just us, but here we go. We're gonna keep going. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again, I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Vocab, vocab, vocab. Meow, 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 meow. meow. And a lattice, a window covering made from strips of wood. You may also have known those as shutters. Mm. Am I recording? I am recording. Okay, good. Just checking. Sometimes I get nervous. Can you all see my face still? Because I can't see myself anymore for some reason. Okay, cool. 
All right, so we're gonna talk about a window lattice. Let me see then, what threat is and this mystery explore, let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore, tis the wind and nothing more. So lattice is our big word for this, for this moment. So how do we, yeah, maybe we can be the lattice or we can open it. You know, sometimes shutters have, yeah, they have the handles. You can be abstract and be the lattice like Miss Madison and Mr. Brian, or you can show me a movement. So either way. All right, I'm gonna take that verse again. Here we go. Back into the chamber turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again, I heard a tapping somewhat louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see then what threat is and this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment and this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here, I flung the shutter. See, I told you it was also called a shutter. Open here, I flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. It means long ago. All right, so meaning like an old ancient raven, which is very cool. So here we go. Have, show me that raven. You can either show me the raven itself or you can show me you seeing that giant old raven. Ready? Three, two, one, freeze. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. All right, here we go. Open here I flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance <laughs> obeisance made he not a minute so he's meaning that this raven is just walking in this raven is just living its life this raven is old and elegant and is gonna walk into this house no matter what he's not obedient he or she they are not obedient and they don't care. They're walking in. So here we go from um, not the least obeisance made. How do we, let me show that we're not obedient. It's such a fun thing. <laughs> Beautiful. I love everything I'm seeing. Thank you. Here we go. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mine of Lord or lady, mean oh, vocab, vocab. this one's vocab heavy friends mean your mean is your appearance and in this case it's not just what you're wearing but kind of what we were already talking about how you're looking how you're expressing yourself right now so not the least obeisance may he not a minute stopped or steady but with mean of lord or lady perched above my chamber door meaning yes exactly look at my lovely qsp teaching artist that's exactly right that means that this raven, he is just so elegant. Oh, drippingly elegant. Perched upon a bust of Pallas. Ooh, also known as Athena. Ah. Yes, vocab, vocab, vocab. Pallas is Athena, goddess of wisdom. Uh, Athena is one of my favorite Greek mythological characters, goddesses. She is a warrior. She is wise. She often has some wolves with her, sometimes a bear. She's very cool. So show me what you think Athena looks like. Ready? Three, two, one, freeze. Oh, beautiful. Just above my chamber door, perched and sat and nothing more. So there's a lot of vocab in that verse. So let's go ahead and start that one from open here, I flung the shutter. Ready? Here we go. Take a breath. Open here, I flung the shutter when with many a flirt and flutter in there stepped a stately raven of the saintly days of yore. Not the least obeisance made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mien of lord or lady perched above my chamber door, perched upon a bust of palace just above my chamber door, perched and sat and nothing more. Then this ebony bird beguiling. Oh, I think we did we get one? Did we get oh, one? Oh, oh, oh. 
Ebony is just another word for black. Ebony is also a, um, a material that is naturally black. So they, it's kind of like saying, uh, you know how like paint colors are named cloud and you know, if they're white, that's exactly the same. Um, so here we go. Uh, then this ebony bird beguiling, ooh. Yeah, so beguiling is another vocab word and it means charming. Oh. Yep. <laughs> so show me your charming poses. Very beautiful. My sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum. Decorum is dignity. Vocab. Vocab. Decorum is dignity. So we have, um, there's, this bird is very cool and very kind of snooty maybe, they know a lot of the countenance it wore, facial expression. <laughs> yes, I know. Though thy crest, I guess I think we have a few more in this one. Yeah, though thy crest be shorn and shaven though, I said, art sure no craven, woo woo woo, coward. <laughs> yes, craven is coward. Ghastly, grim, and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Plutonian, woo, 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 deathly, deathly, Plutonian. Quoth the raven, here we go, nevermore. Okay, so that verse has a ton of vocab words in it. So we are going to show, uh, we're gonna do movement for ebony. Well, whatever movement you think, if you're admiring that you're, because it's just a descriptor of a black raven, so maybe you're just enjoying your black feathers. Um, next is uh, beguiling, which means you're charming. To be beguiling means that you're being very, like, friendly. Beguiling decorum is your dignity or, like, how you're looking, and your countenance is your facial expression. So we have to kind of mix all of these together because these are some of these are adjectives, descriptors, and some of these are nouns. So when we put them all together, that's what is describing this raven and how they're behaving. So here we go. We got, oh, and Plutonian, Plutonian, deathly. Then night's Plutonian sure means that the, the, it's dark and it's a dark and stormy night. So we're here. So here we go. We're gonna do this whole verse. Then this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave and stern decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest be shorn and shaven, though I said art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the nightly shore, tell me what thy lordly name is on the night's Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, and I want everyone to say this. Every time I say quoth the raven, it pretty much only says the same thing. We all say, that's right. We all say nevermore. Never yes. And ravens have um, a very interesting voice where they kind of go quack, quack. So if you can kind of lift your Never more. Never more. Yeah, maybe you want to do a raven voice for me. If you don't, that's cool. <laughs> Much I marveled this ungainly. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> this ungainly, clumsy. Ungainly also just means kind of too big for their own body. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse. So plainly, discourse is just talking. Yep, just talking. So basically, it's exactly if you were living this and a raven was like, never more, you'd be like, uh oh, what's happening? Why is this raven talking? <laughs> Why are we having discourse? <laughs> so plainly, though it's answer, little meaning, little relevancy. Relevancy is important. <laughs> yeah, importance. Relevance also means, um, uh, uh, what's in it? I, I'm trying, I'm struggling to kind of, it doesn't mean it relevancy means something to you or not so if in the moment yeah so if something is irrelevant then it just like doesn't matter but if something is relevant that means that it's happening like right now um um irrelevancy dirges are we at dirges yet no we're not at dirges yet here we go 
So we're going to try this from the top of this verse. Here we go. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little relevancy bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such name as <gasps> Nevermore. Nevermore. But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bust, all right, placid isn't one, placid bust spoke only that one word as if his soul in that one word he did outpour. Nothing further than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow, will he leave me? My hopes, as my hopes have flown before, then the bird said, never, never more, never, never more, more. Never, more. never more. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken, doubtless said I, what it utters is its only stock and store caught from some unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore till the dirges of his hope, dirges. <laughs> now this is an important word. It's not just a song, it's a burial song. Now you may have noticed this is a spooky poem and it deals a little bit with loss, right? So this is about burying someone that you've lost. That was the kind of song you would sing at a funeral type. So uh, meaning that this bird is, has seen some, seen some sad stuff and because Ravens can be taught to talk. Hot news. Um, so our narrator is basically saying, oh, he just, this raven just was around some old, some old funeral and got excited and learned the word nevermore. Because that was in maybe, I should look that up. I wonder if it was in a hymn. Oh, um, uh, let's see. Where are dirges? Something about dirges of his hope that melancholy burden bore of never never more. So we are already at halfway through these words. Good job, team. But the raven still beguiling, we know that one, but the raven still beguiling all my sad fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust the door. Then upon the velvet sinking, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what is, what this ominous bird of your, ominous, means spooky. And uh, show me a good spooky pose, friends. Ooh, good. And we're gonna say this word twice in a row too, which is very exciting. So I'm gonna take this, divining, do we have that one yet? Nope, not yet, okay, good. But the raven still beguiling, we know that one, show me beguiling. Good, thank you. All my sad fancy into smiling, straight I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust the door. Then upon the velvet sinking, meaning that they're sitting down into the chair, I betook myself to linking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, gaunt, and ominous bird of yore meant in croaking. Nevermore. This I sat, engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining. Nevermore, nevermore. Uh, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Um, so as we've kind of noticed, our narrator is really thinking hard. And so coming to a conclusion, divining means, divining also means looking for water, which is really interesting. So sometimes when you're thinking, you find water, right? Eureka, I found it. Yeah. So that's kind of a, a metaphorical word, divining. Um, ooh, I lost my place. Nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but in a syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining. Show me what you would do for divining, friends. 
good. With my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamplight gloating o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen uh, uh, ah, okay. denser, thicker. Then methought the air grew denser. So this means that like, the maybe because he's about to talk about scents too so it's kind of getting hot maybe and it's starting to smell like something and something but it's also cold oh what's happening what's happening in your house good work good work and we have denser sensor uh coming up in just a little bit Sensor is an incense burner, which Miss Melissa and I use incense burners all the time. There's a lot of different kinds. There's kinds with sticks, there's kinds with resin. So I think that this would probably be the kind of sensor that would be kind of like a little cauldron where you would have something hot like charcoal or wood or something and you would put frankincense or myrrh or something on top of it to make it kind of smell. If you've ever been to a Catholic church, there's lots of incense and it has a very particular smell. And, um, but there's also incense in all kinds of cultures and all kinds of religions and all kinds of ceremonies and all kinds of homes. There's also a lot of stores. If you've ever been to Berkeley on Telegraph Avenue, if you walk into a store, you get hit with a smell of incense. Um, so as unseen sensor, so meaning that like all of a sudden the room starts to get like scented. It's almost like there's incense burning, but there's, there isn't, so what? Then the thought the air grew denser. So show me that your air is getting dense, perfumed by an unseen sensor, which is kind of related. Where is it? I don't, I didn't light any incense. Swung by seraphim. Oh, here we go. Seraphim is another word for angel. Show me a big, beautiful angel whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Oh my goodness, so many things. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by these angels he has sent thee. Respite, respite and nepenthe. Ooh. Fuka, fuka, fuka. Uh, and forget this lost Lenore. Nepenthe to drink, a drink that causes forgetfulness. So like a mind eraser. And there's actually a place in Big Sur called Nepenthe, which is named for the same kind of thing. So let's do that whole section because there's a lot of wild stuff happening in this section. Here we go. Then methought the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen sensor, swung by seraphim whose footfalls tinkled on the tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee. By these angels he has sent thee respite, respite and nepenthe, and forgot this lost Lenore. Quoth the raven, Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still if bird or devil, whether tempter, ooh, Yep, whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed, tempest, where, 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 and tempter. Tempter is the devil, a tempest is a storm. So our narrator is accusing this raven of being a lot of, lot of wild things. Um, tossed thee here ashore, desolate means all alone, completely empty, um, uh, desolate, yet all undaunted, meaning you're not afraid to be alone on this place, good. On this desert land in enchanted, I think is how it's supposed to be pronounced, but I'm not gonna do that because the language has changed over the last hundred years. On this home by horror haunted, tell me truly I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me I implore, Gilead an ancient place in the Middle East known for its balm, a balm in Gilead also represents like finding something soothing. Is there something good that's going to happen? And then we have, no, no, okay, so we're going to go back. Here we go. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, or devil, I think is what it's supposed to be, which is oh. hilarious. Whether tempter sent or whether tempest tossed, 
thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. Here we just have a few things left. Here we go. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden if within the distant Aden, rich province in Turkey, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's uh, in biblical times that would be near Gilead, I would assume. Um, so this is another a rich province in Turkey, which means that it would be like a really, like another really beautiful, good place. So show me that you're in like a beautiful, good place. Within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Okay, we're gonna go back, here we go. So this is our second time that he's talking to the raven, here we go. Prophet said I, thing of evil, prophet still if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell this soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp a sainted maiden whom the angels name Lenore, clasp a rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore, quoth the raven, Nevermore. Never more. Never more. Mm -hmm. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked upstarting. Get thee back into the tempest. Where's the tempest? And the night's Plutonian, we're using our words that we've already learned, Plutonian shore. Leave no black plume. A plume is a feather. So you're not going to leave black feathers behind. Yep, we're almost there. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thy soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. Take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven. Nevermore. Never more. Never more. And the raven never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid, pallid means pale, and in this case, yes, to be pale is for a person would imply something, but this in this case means that it's just made of marble, which would be a light color, so it's on a pale bust of Pallas, meaning that it's carved from something light. On the pallid bust of Pallas, show me Athena again, just above my chamber door, and his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming. And the lamplight o'er him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the floor shall be lifted evermore. The end. Okay, friends, great work. Holy moly, what a long, awesome poem. So five W's. I would love my teaching artist right now. Take a minute and think, who is this about? What is it about? When does it take place? We have one clue about when, but Mr. Brian, is it is this conversation gonna be too scary for you? Maybe just a little bit. It's a little too scary? Okay, mm -hmm. that's okay. My, my other three folks are going to stay with me so we can say thank you to Mr. Brian. And Mr. Brian, can you give me one word about for your checkout? I'm going to say one word for the checkout. I, I'm going to say excited because I'm really excited to, to just like go over this again and again, I let like all these new words. So I'm really excited. Thank you, Mr. Brian. All right. Go take care of yourself. Don't be scared. No raven is going to come. All right. you. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, Mr. Brian. Oh, he won't leave. There he goes. <laughs> All right. So who, what, when, where, and why do we think this was written? The big why is why we think this is written and why we think everyone's kind of behaving the way they are. So I'm going to go ahead and start with 
who, who is in the poem? Who is it about? So we have our narrator. We also have someone who we don't meet in the poem. We have our narrator and our raven. Those are the only two people that we really meet. There's someone that the narrator keeps talking about. Who do we think, who is that? Yeah, Miss Melissa. Lenore. Lenore, and Miss Melissa, what do you think happens to Lenore? Um, I think that she is somebody who the narrator loved and she passed on. That's what I think so too. I know. And I think our narrator is, what kind of emotions do we think our narrator is feeling at the beginning of the poem? Anyone? Yeah, Miss Madison? Sadness. Yeah, they're feeling sadness. And I'm going to use he, him pronouns for this narrator only because uh, I tend to think of this narrator as Poe himself because Edgar Allan Poe also lost someone that he loved very much. And there's another poem of his called Annabelle Lee that is also about some losing someone that you really love. So he talked about and thought about this topic a lot. Um, this one's just a little bit more famous because it's longer and it's a little spookier. Annabelle Lee is just kind of beautiful and sad, but this poem, a lot happens in this poem, huh? And it's got an interesting ending. So we know who, so what's it about? What's, what happens? What's gonna, what happens in this long poem? Oh. Yeah, Mr. Justin. A raven appears at his chamber door by out the window. Very scary. I know, and the raven just kind of comes in and acts like they're the boss. <laughs> mm -hmm. All those vocabulary mm -hmm. words. And what, so there's a lot of theories. Mr. Justin, since you're, since I was just talking to you, if you had to guess, what do you think the raven is a metaphor for? Metaphor means uh, something oh. standing in for something else. Mm -hmm. Something that it means. I think the raven is a metaphor for death. That's Ooh, what I, think. I think so too. I think. That's mm -hmm. one thing, but there could be any number of things. People, scholars have talked a lot about this poem for over a hundred years. So there's no wrong answers. I think that, but not everyone thinks that. Um, so who, what, when does it take place? We have one big clue. Uh, our narrator uses the word December really early in the poem. Oh, sorry, Ms. Melissa. <laughs> I was gonna try to make it December easy. December is my favorite month. So when and I heard it, my, oh, December, I love December. <laughs> why is December your favorite month? Because it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Ms. Melissa. Thank you. Um, so yes, yeah, so we know it's in December and we also know when it was written. So we know that maybe it was written to be in present day 1800s, late 1800s. But for our purposes, is there anything in this poem that forces, other than the language, is there anything in this poem that forces it to be in any particular year? It's old. <laughs> Yes, it is. <laughs> uh, so other than some of the older words, um, is there anything else? I would, I would maybe argue as a director that there's not really anything that makes it have to be in any particular year. So if, for the purposes of our class, we can say that it's 2020 or 2021 since that's when I'll be performing with you guys. I would say the way that the the lights and the room are described are very not, they don't have modern technologies. That is true, that is true. Which and is what made me think it's old, but you're the director, so I will listen to you. I will both, again, both are right. Both are right and both are wrong and both are everything. So don't worry about it. Um, but yes, there are some dramaturgical elements that do place it, that is a good one to be listening for, especially if you were a lighting designer, which is something that we talk about. You wanna be listening to what kind of lights are in the space. And um, who, what, when, where, you know, it's kind of in a, in a chamber. So I think even though we're setting ours in a library, I think that this is supposed to be his bedroom or his study, um, but I want, I want you to kind of imagine that you're in somewhere that you spend that you're comfortable I think one thing that I like about this poem is that 
he is, we know he's grieving, we know he's sad, but we also know that he is in this space for the purposes of this poem to comfort himself and to find, you know, um, to have just kind of a nice spooky evening to himself like I do. So <laughs> We know if it's daytime or nighttime, Miss Anna. Ooh, I don't know. I would assume that because we use such dark words every so often, mm -hmm. I think it's nighttime. Oh, first and line. Once if upon it was a daytime. Oh. Oh, midnight. First line. Once daytime, upon a midnight have. dreary. Oh yeah, yeah. If it midnight. was daytime back in the day, then he wouldn't have lights on. That's true. <laughs> Unless he was in a in like a, a chamber. <laughs> Nothing gets waiting. by Miss Madison. <laughs> Windowless library. That's so people can really read the books. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who, when, where, what? And the last one I want to talk about is why do you I kind of kind of gave this away a minute ago, but why do you think someone would write a poem like this? Why do you think that Edgar Allan Poe wrote this? What do you think? What do you think? think to express his pain and also to um, let other people know that maybe are also going through pain, that they're not alone in going through pain. Thank you for sharing that, Ms. Madison. I think that's lovely. Maybe trying to figure out his feelings. It could have helped him figure stuff out if he was going through. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Justin, any, any thoughts on that? No, I mean, I think I agree with what everyone else is saying, just the, a way to process, a way to process his grief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I also think, you know, I personally have grieved and everyone has grieved in some ways. And one of the things that I think is interesting about this poem is sometimes when you're grieving, you want to yell at someone you want to blame someone and you want it to be something else. You want it to be from somewhere else, from the spirits or from the sky. And so I think it also makes sense to have it be a raven because ravens are very, um, you know, like he says that they're very elegant and they're very, um, they, they're very wise and they're very ancient in a lot of ways. And the symbolism of a raven is very deep. And also to have a raven come visit you and to kind of spook you and to say, no, you're not gonna see Lenore again. And you're not, I'm never leaving. <laughs> I'm never leaving. I'm gonna sit on Athena forever and ever you're, no, there's no relief. No, there's no Gilead. No, there's no Aiden. But he may not get that closure without the Raven. And it may not be true. The Raven may not be telling the truth. Um, so there's all kinds of interesting stuff happening in this poem. Yeah, Miss Melissa. Well, I was gonna say, um, capitalistically scary stories in wintertime did very well also. So I'm sure Poe was like, pay me please. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit, just a little bit, probably that too. <laughs> probably also that too. It was his job to write poems. <laughs> um, but isn't it nice to have a job that also helps you with your own grief in your own process. As artists, I think we can all relate to that. So, all right. So that's kind of, that was a lot of stuff that we covered, friends. That was a lot of stuff that we covered. And um, we didn't even really finish because there's always more things to say. But what I am going to say is I will see you for our one and only Zoom class <laughs> on January 2nd at 11 a.m. Pacific time. So that'll be uh, noon mountain. And um, what's that? 11, 12, 1, 2, 2 p.m. Eastern. 
um, because we have all kinds of time zones for our friends, which is awesome. Uh, And if you cannot make that Zoom class since um, uh, it's December 22nd and I'm only telling you about it now, that's okay. Uh, I would love though, if you watch this video and you learn something and you enjoyed working with your box, have your grownups send an email or, you know, send me a video of how your book binding turned out. And if you are, you know, I already did hear from one mom that we do have one student who's been requesting the Raven as her nighttime story, which is pretty cool. Um, so other than that, let's go ahead and check out. So I'm gonna check out first and I'm gonna say that I'm feeling fulfilled and I'm gonna throw it to Miss Melissa. I am feeling happy, I'm feeling happy. And I'm gonna throw it to Mr. Justin. I am feeling content, also happy. Um, and I'm gonna throw it to Miss Madison. I am feeling calm. And I'll throw it back to Miss Anna. All right. Lovely work, friends. Go ahead and take one more deep breath and reach all the way up. And shake it all the way down. Shake your shoulders. Shake your head. Good. And find stillness. And I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. And oh, we say drama class. Ready? One. Uh, unmute teaching artists. I want to hear your voices too. <laughs> Ready? Three, two, one. Drama class. Drama class. Yay. All right. See you next time.